Hi, Todd Martin here with The Walking Code. In this video, I'm going to do a little change of direction and talk about running. I'm not a runner, but I hear a lot of opinions about running and my movement analysis system has a lot to say about running. So I wanted to chime in and give my two cents about running, particularly about foot strike. So there's a lot of talk about whether heel strike is good or heel strike is bad, mid foot strike is good, mid foot strike is bad, or four foot striking. I'm not going to weigh in on which one of these is better, but I will say that whether you strike on your heel or on your midfoot or on your forefoot really depends not so much on your feet and what you want your feet to do. It depends on your sequence of core movements that you're doing while you're running. Just like with the walking code, every type of movement we do is controlled by the sequence of core rotation, which includes the rotation of our upper thoracic spine, our lumbar spine, and the actions of our hip joints. How we sequence these elements together, the two elements of the spine and then our hip joints, determines how our feet are going to land. It's not determined by what we think we want to do with our feet. So, there are particular combinations of movement that will cause you to land on your heel versus causing you to land on your midfoot and versus causing you to land on your forefoot. One of the variables at play is the speed or the cadence that you're moving. When you are running very slow, your lead leg needs to travel out a fair distance in front of you and land because you're not really propelling your body forward a significant distance with each step. That means your leg is going to land out in front of your body and thus has to generally place on the heel. It is not healthy to land on the ball of the foot or even the midfoot if your weight is significantly behind that landing foot. When we heel strike, what we're doing after the impulse from the ground is lifting that swing leg forward by flexing the hip of the swing leg. That's what brings that leg up. At that point, we pull in the rear leg that just impulsed off the ground. We pull that in by flexing the hip and the front leg comes down onto the heel and then we follow through with the next step. When we start to move at a more mid-tempo, that's where midfoot striking becomes a little bit more natural. Now, the difference with midfoot striking is after we impulse off the ground, which occurs the same way with each type of gait, after we impulse off the ground, instead of flexing that swing leg so it comes out in front of us, what we do is continue extending the rear leg behind us and then we just bring the weight down with rotation of our lumbar spine. You'll learn that if you watch some of the walking code videos. When you rotate the lumbar spine, it pulls the pelvis backward and that brings the foot down to the ground. And it will land on the midfoot with the rear leg still extending out behind the body. When we run at very fast speeds or sprinting, that's where landing on the forefoot actually becomes much more practical. You'll see this in the clip that I have posted on the video here. When we sprint, we impulse off the ground just like we normally would with the other gates. And then we lift the swing leg hip forward just as if we were doing that slow jog. But at that point, this is where the difference is. Instead of flexing the rear hip to bring it forward, which we would do if a heel strike was happening, and instead of continuing to extend the rear hip so it extends out behind us like with the midfoot strike, with the forefoot strike, we extend that swing leg hip which has just been pushed out in front of the body, we now extend the hip down towards the ground like pushing down on a bike pedal, or it is actually the same motion we do when we descend a staircase and land on the ball of the foot. It's that pushing down and descending action that brings the forefoot and the swing leg straight down underneath our center of gravity, 
allowing us to land on the forefoot. And then we immediately impulse off again without any real relaxation or collection of the weight. So when we land on the forefoot, there is only a brief second or fraction of a second where the weight is on the ground and then we basically spring off. In the other gates, there's a portion of the step where we relax or settle the weight into the step. That takes more time and that's why those two gates, meaning the heel strike or the midfoot strike, are slower than the forefoot strike in general. So that's all I really have to say about running technique. If you are interested in how the body moves and the body functions and how the core has a prominent role in all of these movements, whether it's walking or running or dancing or other things, if you're interested in that, I recommend you look into the Walking Code course, which I have some videos on YouTube. I also have an online course on my Movement Sphere website. You'll see linked here. There you can see the core movement patterns that we use for all kinds of functional movement. Those are based essentially on the fundamental principles of Tai Chi, which have been around for thousands of years. I've applied those principles to other non-Tai Chi related activities like walking, running, and dancing. So thanks for watching this video. If you found this information helpful, please like, share it, and subscribe. Also, check out my Movement Sphere website and the Walking Code online course. I don't yet have a running code course, but that will be coming in the future possibly. There's the Tai Chi code is also present up there. Thank you.